Good morning, Reefers. I'm Daniel, and today I wanted to talk about tuning your skimmer. A lot of people will debate the proper way to tune your skimmer, um, but first of all, let's start off what a skimmer is for. Uh, you use a skimmer to remove proteins from your water, like fish poop and different things like that. The higher the bio load, the better the skimmer you probably want. And so, there's different types of skimmers also. There's hang on the backs, there's in the sump, um, there's external. So this is an in the sump skimmer. And I do keep my skim mate very watery. It is dark green, but you can see how liquidy it is. Um, some skim mates in people's tanks is a very thick consistency. And I'm always afraid because you never know what it's gonna bubble over. See all that green on top? That means it's bubbled over several times. And look at the inside of here. It's time to clean out this protein skimmer cup. Even though I just did it last week, it's already a mess again. But you can see how mine's just bubbling at the top right there. And that's pretty much what you want. But it's hard to judge, like I said, depending on if you just fed, if you added some supplements, if you put in new salt, whatever you're doing can actually change your skimmer as well. So even if you have soap on your hands and you put your hand in your tank, some kind of lotion, it's just amazing what will um, what will happen there. So, so anyway, so as far as tuning your skimmer, there's different ways, and depending on what type of skimmer you have, the instructions will be a little bit different. But the water level controls the bubbles for most people. Um, I'm just gonna put that back on there for now. I will clean that out, even though I just did it. It's already a mess. But um, that happens with as many fish as I have and as much as I feed. My skimmer does work a lot, um, but at the same time, I don't have an oversized skimmer. The skimmer is just just barely cutting it for this tank, but I didn't want to over skim. So some people run their skimmers 12 hours a day, some people run them 24 hours a day, but at the same time, I feel a lot of people over skim their tanks. So I, I could literally talk about skimmers for a day and a half. I could, I could do that. It's pretty easy. So, but, um, but also you can see is when I'm doing a water change, I will turn up my skimmer to try to help get out some extra water, some nasty water that I would. So that way when I'm doing my water change, it can, um, sorry, let me rinse this off my hand. <laughs> that skimmer crap is nasty. But anyway, as I was saying, when I do my water change, I'll turn up the skimmer so it performs a little bit better. Um, this skimmer actually has a DC pump, so I'll just hit the plus button until it goes all the way up. Now it's going to make it very watery and very bubbly right away. And you can see it's already happening. It's foaming over. It's bubbling up. So, like I said, when I'm doing my water change, I can use this to help pull out some of the nastier water and it'll leave behind some of the better stuff. So depending on your tank, your size, your setup, that works. So, look at, look at how nasty that is. Look how dark, dark that is. And it, there's nothing wrong, if you have a dry skin mate, there's nothing wrong with that. It literally, you just want to have to adjust it for your system. You don't want this overflowing constantly, so you're going to want to fine tune it for your system. If you tend to get a super dry skim mate, it's really not a problem, but if you want to get proper use of your skimmer, you may want to turn it up just a little more. If it's super dry, um, the bubbles are probably just popping barely at the top, so you could be removing more waste if you um, make it a little watery. So, but that's also one way to dial back the use of it. So I don't know just the skimmer running how much where the iodine will collect in the skimmer and, and where it removes your, what's good and bad. So it's a very tough call with the skimmer. You do remove some good things as well as the bad. That's why you have to do the water changes. That's why you have to continue to test. A lot of people go, oh I never do a water change and never do this. I'm like, well you gotta add those nutrients somehow. You need a calcium reactor, you need a dose Hey, there's so much, so much more to, um, you know, the skimmer than most people want to discuss. But 
I hope that was helpful for you guys. I know I kind of rambled. I just carried a couple topics. Uh, I have a lot to do today, but I've still been trying to put out a video a day for you guys. Um, I do have some really good big videos that I've been working on, and I just haven't had time to edit them. So stuff like I'm doing on the Palitoxin, um, the video that I'm doing on the Aptasia X, those are going to take some time. So, but yeah, my Aptasia X, it worked for about a day, and then everything came back. Not that I want to knock Aptasia X, it was fun to use, and there is a cool, some cool videos of the Aptasia exploding. Um, when you use it, but it doesn't really eradicate them because they kind of tend to reroot and come back. But it may protect the babies from forming or spreading. But the root, like I said, I don't know how you got to use several applications, it's not a one and done deal. You have to hunt those things down and stay on top of them because they will come back. But there you guys go. As always, thanks for watching and happy reefing. Um, check your skimmer. As always, and stuff. Maintenance and tank. What do they call it? Not maintenance, but... Preparation? What the hell was I going to say? Honestly, I don't remember. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. And thank you for being part of the Coralus community.